everyone. Welcome to a Hungover Podcast. My name's Yvonne over there. Julian, welcome to the podcast, guys. Hey, and we are Hungover Gaming. This is our weekly podcast where we cover... Mm. Mm. I'm sucking dick. Right it's now. very difficult to do this sometimes. I understand. I don't know okay. why we do this. <laughs> oh, my... My autofocus was keying in on my fingers. Now it's all better. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Hungover Podcast. My name's Yvonne over there. What's up, guys? My name's Julian. Hey, and we are Hungover Gaming. We have a weekly podcast that you can catch right here on YouTube, right here on iTunes, right here on SoundCloud, uh, or check it out on any of the mediums. We bring topics that range from global warming to a jet pie and the censoring of the internet uh, through the media companies doing everything to fuck up our upload speeds, which is a real thing that we'll get into. And oh God. <laughs> <laughs> this week we're going to cover some stuff with uh, loot boxes, gambling, and really the whole system of unlocking items and tools for games in the modern era. Uh, but Julian... Yes. As you know, what what would somebody do if they, for instance, liked what they heard on this or any other podcast? You know, if you really like this podcast, we really, really encourage you to go to iTunes.com to give us a sweet, sweet review. And if you don't like it, go ahead and do the same exact thing. I think it works in our favor either way. So just, <laughs> no, uh, we only accept five star reviews. So uh, if you're not willing to give it, I'm kidding. Um, no, we'd really like you to give us a review because it helps a lot with our uh our visibility on the internet and we'd really like to get our voices out into the ears and podcast services of many other people um so go ahead and do that if you have the time thanks uh, yeah. yeah also word of mouth sharing that's great too so julian mm -hmm. you know what i had that was word of mouth shared to me by idris elba which is what i consume this week in terms of media and alcohol no, what what is this? Idris Elba sold me on the trailer for Pacific Rim way back when, when it was in theaters, and I bought it on Blu-ray, and I have enjoyed it tremendously because you Idris Elba has the greatest line uttered in modern cinema history. He says, "Tonight we cancel the apocalypse." <laughs> That's awesome. I don't Idris even Elba remember list. him in that movie, but then again, I saw half of it. So <laughs> Charlie Hunnam. Idris Elba, um, Charlie Day playing a scientist. Oh, Charlie Day was in that? Yeah. What the fuck? He plays a scientist. Holy shit, that's cool. Ron Perlman, directed by Guillermo del Toro. Who, what more do you want? Um, you know, I don't know. I just don't know. Giant robots, giant monsters fighting against each other. Who it's directed like, it? Guillermo del Toro. Oh, oh, okay, sorry. I literally blanked out when you said his name only. Uh, that's <laughs> awesome. I, actually, that's really cool. <laughs> Spec I should probably Techmar. finish seeing it. <laughs> um, in terms of things that I have consumed, so I went home to spend some time with the, the parentals. So Very nice. So I had a bunch of wine and uh, some oh, yeah. shout-outs and thoughts and, and good things, good wishes to all of the uh, California wine growers who are going through a tremendous difficult time right now. Yeah, there's a huge uh, wildfire situation going on, right? Yeah, and it's uh, it's uh, damaging entire crops. Uh, it shouldn't some... affect the roots, but which is the really really important part of growing wine. But I I definitely know exactly what you're saying because there aren't any you know grapes anymore. Yeah, because... I mean they were complaining because <laughs> they had to take the grapes out early because it was so hot in the summer. But in addition to that, it's not just the vines because sometimes the fire was so fast that it would just like go through in between the vines and just leave the vines there not yeah, even okay. burnt but uh entire tasting rooms housing that's so are part they of it, so. are they going to make wine for this year uh we'll see i don't know so we shouldn't but even if they do it's not going to be very good right because they had to take the grapes off the vine the vine so that's we'll, we'll that's something to, to look forward to when we try to get some 2017 vints yeah. uh, you know what i mean uh, uh, I actually, I'd like to find out. Actually, it's a good experiment. It's probably going to be horrible, but I'll try it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
No, it's a good point. And then uh, some tried some other the, the California ones through some friends of mine that were actually pretty pretty good. Overindulged a little bit, gotta say. Okay. Overindulged, but they were really delicious ones. I really like a California Cab Sauv. Ooh. All right, all right. That's uh, that sounds awesome. You had a lot of wine, and I wish I had a lot of wine. But Avon, I'll tell you. I actually didn't drink any alcohol this weekend, um, which should come as a surprise <laughs> because this is hungover gaming, and um, I love alcohol most than more than probably about I'd say fifty percent of the humans on this planet. I, I I don't know. There are a lot of people on this planet, and there are a lot of alcoholics. So <laughs> that is a tremendous. So feat, I don't know. Bro. Yeah, and I really love wine, and I just did not have anything, so maybe I'm going through a detox, detox period for a weekend. Uh, also, know. last weekend I got very drunk, so maybe that's why. <laughs> um, Solid. Yeah, it's disgusting. Um, and also, alcohol is really bad for you. <laughs> uh, ex- In well, you can moderation, have moderation, some red wine. Of course, wine. and and even a beer. There's some useful things from beer that you can get um all the hops have some nutrients in there but uh yeah i didn't drink any wine or anything or beer i drank a lot of water um and also i wanted to tell you last night i stayed up until 4 30 in the morning jesus playing the destiny 2 raid Ooh. we actually beat it um you got it done well granted we started at i think must have been 10 30 or 11 uh, so still six hours, but, <laughs> but we did it all. Uh, this was, I had gotten pretty much halfway through the raid, uh, this week twice with two separate groups. Um, and then I restarted it with my clan members and we actually beat it, which makes me very happy. And now I intend to, and I finally got that trophy and I, now I never intend to play that raid again. So, because <laughs> I will not, Wait I refuse to fucking me. teach anyone. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it with you, Yvonne. I refuse to teach anyone else. If you get to the end game of Destiny 2, I refuse to teach anyone else. I'm sick and tired of it. You guys can figure it out on your own, all right? God damn it. And um, I have I... secretly been playing some Destiny 2. Really? Yes. Are you liking it? I am it's liking better. it. I'm liking it enough that I'm soloing the campaign stuff. Yeah. Uh, while I watch my media catch up on the media that I that I missed when I was in Turkmenistan. Nice. So Very yeah. Nice. So this is. It's been my. Uh, I need to play a shooter. I tried Battlefield Two. We'll get into that in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Or Battlefront Two. But I needed a shooter that I could kind of uh, play while mindlessly listening to something it- else. It's very good for that, I'll tell you that much. And there's a lot of end game stuff that gets a little grindy, and you'll be just right at home if you like doing that. Um, and then also, I think the the raid is pretty cool. I liked it a lot, actually. Um, nice. I had a lot of fun. Um, I was just getting frustrated with people who didn't know what to do, which I don't have a inherent problem with but when it takes when you're wasting five four two three hours of my time just because you can't get your shit together i mean come on man i i was playing <laughs> so annoying I, I don't mind taking an hour to teach you how to do each part but once i teach you how to do it you should be able to do it it's not that hard once you figure it out but they just couldn't figure it out anyway you sound like a tough teacher oh god it's it's <laughs> But the thing is, a lot of people try to explain it without being in the section that they're trying to explain. So they have no context. And if you take shit like that out of context, it makes no sense. <laughs> um, but uh, on the other side of things, I also played a lot of Stardew Valley. I'm really into that game. Still, I made it to fall, killing the game. Uh, I just got to the harvest of the fall. I really made a lot. I grew a lot of cranberries, <laughs> a lot of <laughs> what a I lot had of period. random shit. I yes, pretty much. I was trying to make some vodka. I, I actually grew a lot of hops in the summer, so I'm trying to figure out how to make beer in that game because you can, and uh, I intend to make some beer. 
And then also I played some Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. That game is really, despite how it looks and all the shit everyone's giving it for its roster and everything, um, the gameplay of the game is so solid and I think it's so creative and I really, really like... You have to get... It's the perfect example of judging a book by its cover, I think. I think that game... Because that game is so, so deep uh, and when it comes to the fighting game system mm-hmm. that it's really it's really impressive. I like it a lot. Um, and it's so different from Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Mm-hmm. But um, aside from that, those are the video games I've been playing. Um, a lot of Destiny 2, although now that I've beaten the raid, I can play other games, thankfully. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so that's, that's me this week. How and much time did you have to put in till you felt comfortable doing the raid? Oh, I'm max power level in that game. So, oh, comfortable. Yeah. I was comfortable. Like, like when I hit 280, 280 to 290 power level. If you hit that, you're fine. You don't have to hit max power level if you know what you're doing. <laughs> And you're you're a competent person, Yvonne, so I think you'll be fine. I'll take Once that compliment. Yeah. At least I'm competent. <laughs> yes. There are a lot of incompetent people that you meet on the internet. Let me tell you that much. <laughs> I think the internet is not the only place you meet them, but yes, there are a lot yes. of incompetent people yes. on the internet. <laughs> it's just the the place where I meet the most people, <laughs> I think. <laughs> so I don't have a gauge of confidence levels outside of the internet anyways uh yvonne i think we've we've beat the the uh horse pretty hard when it comes to i don't i don't even know what i'm talking about i'm trying to make a segue here (laughs) into the topic of the show because we were talking about video games yvonne you know we were talking a lot about video games in fact destiny 2 has something called a bright engram i don't know if you've come across one yvonne nope but it's essentially uh, I don't know if you've come across an engram in, in general yet that you have to decrypt. Yes. So you have to, you get these little soccer ball looking things that yeah, are different yeah. colors. You, I you usually get... have the white and the green ones right now. Right. So, yeah, but those automatically decrypt for you. Yes, when I know, you get but in Destiny, ones? the original one, I did play yeah. so that I got the blue and the purple. Okay, cool. Well, that's a perfect example of a loot box that is probably pretty much all right, actually. The engram system, aside from the bright engrams in Destiny, I would say, um, is is all right. You know, you, you hand it in, you get a random thing from it. Um, or you get a random thing based off of a loot pool that is related to that where you got that engram um so that's cool i like that idea but avon when it Mm. comes to gaming in 2017 i think you'd be hard pressed to find a game that's currently coming out that does not have a loot box system in it do you know that i kind of figured that out when i was playing the battlefield or battlefront i'm gonna confuse that every single time the battlefront 2 beta (laughs) In which I was uh, confronted with the loot box system to to an extent because I was reading up on it and I didn't really give a shit about unlocking anything in that game, but just reading up on the stories of how the Star Wars Battlefront Two loot box system is so tremendously difficult to handle and ha- manage and handle. Um, in terms of using it for player progression, making sure that some people have better weapons than others and different things. So it's a different system than, let's say, an Overwatch loot box system which, yes. or CSGO, which is mostly about skins and different ways of making objects or items look in the and feel in the game versus giving people real player progression stuff. So I think that there's a lot of different uh, controversies or different issues that come up when we're talking about how a loot box system can work within within the thing. My biggest issue with Star Wars Battlefront 2 system, from what I understand, is the fact that it really is a system which player progression and getting better items and better weapons is based on getting more and more experience. So, like COD in the old days, 
Um, so the better you get at the game, the better weapons you have. So people who have more experience and are better at playing have another third tier of advantage over people just starting out or people who aren't the best at the game. And it Absolutely. seems like a, a way of... It's a really weird way of introducing a multiplayer uh, system. What do you think? Um, well, I've I've done a little bit of reading. It seems to me that you can, if you... You, okay, so there are two different types of loot boxes. There are loot boxes that you don't pay for, and there's loot boxes that you can buy with real money. And generally, that line is actually not is kind of blurred, right? There's they're the same loot boxes essentially. So mm-hmm. some games split them up. Um, you can buy specific loot boxes. Um, for instance, in Destiny Two, you can buy bright engrams, or you can buy you can spend money on the the virtual currency that allows you to buy shaders and things, um, and I I mean I I don't like that at all. I, I didn't want them to put any of that shit in there, but uh, it happened. Okay, and then there's the, then there's loot boxes. Um, oh well, yeah. So I should I should say so in Destiny, like I said, the engrams, the, like the legendary engrams and the exotic engrams, you can't buy. So at least there's that in the game. Uh, so you're only buying engrams that will give you cosmetic related things. So that's cool, but um, but you can buy them. So there's and then in Overwatch, let's say all the loot boxes are the same. There, it's only one. Uh, well, there, yeah. There's only really one type of loot box, and it gives you cosmetic things. And you can buy a, a twenty-five dollars worth of them, a hundred dollars worth of them, whatever you want. Um, and you can maybe get nothing. Uh, it's pretty much, I, I don't know. I, I know a lot of people have been saying it's gambling, but I guess it's technically not, I think, um, because you stand no chance of gaining any monetary value. I think that's the exact definition of gambling. Um, but yeah, so there's there's that, and then there's what they're doing in Star Wars Battlefront Two, which I think... Um, if I'm not mistaken, you can get guns and things that yeah. uh, allow you to do better in the game uh, or give you a competitive advantage, let's say, because you had a better gun that you got in a loot box. So you can get those loot boxes through level progression, which is great, but you can also spend money to buy them. So that's the problem that a lot of people have been talking about. Um, you end up having these people who bought the game day one everyone's on a level playing field right let's say as soon as the servers come online but these people uh who want to game the system spend an extra hundred bucks right and Mm -hmm. got however many loot boxes that gets you and then they ended up getting half the good guns let's let's say they even got one good gun out of that which i assume you would if you spent that much money and then at that point um you're at a better you're at an advantage it doesn't matter what you say like sure you can say um you still have to be able to get the headshot but i mean if the gun is best at getting headshots and does more damage then you're gonna have more likely come across a situation where you're gonna win so it is essentially pay to win as it were um or that's my understanding of it i don't i don't know you actually played the beta so i don't know so in the beta, the the monetary buying of the boxes was turned off, but this is the supposed system. If it the system as it is in the beta exists in the real game, then that's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be a pay-to-win system where you're unlocking loot crates mm-hmm. at such a glacial pace that people who are going to pay into that system are going to gain credits faster to buy these uh, whatever packs, etc. So it's going to just snowball. It's the snowball effect in terms of the um, you need to put more money in to have the chance of obtaining this imaginary currency, and then you use that imaginary currency to get the upgrades and different things and abilities and stats. So yes. it's it's different even than in uh, like the original Battlefront or even in a Battlefield game where or yeah in battlefield the one uh, the system as far as i understand it is mostly cosmetic uh in terms of the loot crates and opening those things but there are also some 
you just unlock better guns by being better at the game. More experience, unlocking different things, challenges, etc. So there's the two different principles, right? You pay to win, you go through the game progression, and you get the weapons that way. It's just a very, really weird thing. And then if we're going to bring in the idea of gambling on it, right, I don't think that necessarily this level of opening up a box is like gambling. Yeah, I don't think so necessarily. But I think, I I mean, I don't know if you have anything else to say on that, on that specifically, but I, I think it it does prey on the on the addictive tendencies that gambling um, brings up. That's I what think, I, that's yeah. what I was going to point at is that I think I think video game developers and people who are who are building these these systems within games have really looked at what it is about casinos that people find rewarding because mm-hmm. the microtransaction system that existed beforehand got a bad rap but this kind of and loot so box season passes yeah things like that so there you're looking at a system that you can hook and addict i mean children into Almost, this system yeah, possibly uh and and encourage this kind of um taking the hit you know it's like we talked about how you're when you have notifications on your phone right you look at your phone if you get a notification it feels like you won something it feels like you've won a game of roulette or or um the thing where you pull the handle whatever that and is unless it's an email then it's then it's really bad then i it hate is emails <laughs> always bad right <laughs> but uh the idea of that kind of reward system so you pull the handle you spin the loot box wheels and out pops uh, pops um a few items then that's really and then your people get so excited about the idea of winning these loot boxes it's just uh, I think it's really tapping into the idea of the addiction of that rush that you get from gambling. Yeah, there's uh, definitely some dopamine, some serotonin, norepinephrine. What's what's the other one that starts with the N? I'm not a psychologist. God damn it. Uh, or a biologist. Anyways, yeah, so I, I definitely agree with that. And then also putting, for instance, I think Destiny 2, um, very sly about it. Sure, you you get a you get a loot box every now and then, and then even Overwatch in the same way, you get a loot box for leveling up, and then you go you have to go into a screen that uh, in order to open it, right? So you have to go through the menu the you have to go to a specific vendor in Destiny, but that vendor also so happens to be the person that you spend money at that you can buy more. Uh, it's called Silver, I think, in Destiny 2. And then in Overwatch, there's a nice little icon that you can say, buy more loot boxes right there. But you have to go to that screen in order to open the loot box to begin with. So I think that's also another way, tactic, I guess, for them to get more money from you. Um, but I, I don't necessarily want to blame the developers themselves. I think this is, I think in terms, I think personally... For Destiny 2, this is just my personal opinion. I think it's Activision <laughs> that uh, because they are a very large company and uh, they are, I mean, all all video game publishers and uh, to a certain extent developers are in it for the money, right? This is a business, so they have to make money. Uh, if they don't, then they're not going to make any more video games. It doesn't make sense for them to do that. But because this is such a lucrative business and they are seeing many uh, times over the investment price um, from the profits from loot boxes, they're going to keep putting them in there. So it's really a matter of vote. I, I'd say voting with your wallet, right? So you can buy the game, um, but don't buy loot boxes, right? Or I, I think that's generally what I would do. I mean, I've bought Overwatch loot boxes, but that's because I like the game. So I think I think what you can do, I mean, I'll I'll buy loot boxes if I think it's if I like the developer, if I like if I like the game and I like what I'm getting from them, I'll buy them. I don't necessarily have an inherent problem with being able to buy loot boxes um, if it's just cosmetic. So I have a problem with the Battlefield 2 from what I've been hearing. But then again, I haven't played the game, so I can't 
make an honest opinion about it. So how much does the developer then play into your 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 psyche? I know it plays di- distinctively into mine. So like dice didn't screw me over with Battlefront, the first right. one, but I really felt like they um, got a lot of extra money out of me for the game that they published. Yes. Um, so I feel like that bad taste in my mouth has lingered, and I I am now way more skeptical in terms of paying for EA games, um, like microtransactions and EA games, and mm-hmm. and dice in particular. So I would I've never bought a Battlefield One loot crate or whatever. I will never buy anything for Star Wars, and uh, the this kind of thing it, it continues in my mind. So how much does a video game developer play in your mind? I I like to believe that they're like the <laughs> the good people in this situation, but I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not a developer. I know that they sink. I I'd like to believe that because like that they're they're pure and they don't want to put loot boxes in their game, um, but they're being forced to by the publishers. But um, because they're the ones who pay their salary, right? Or I guess in some way they pay their salary in my in in the in my logic that's how that works i could be wrong um but i i mean i could be wrong about that i don't know i i i like to believe that because i think and i know that a lot of developers and almost all developers sink years of their lives into this game so i don't i and i know i know they're listening to fan reaction that's actually a huge thing for them for them they're actually very afraid um to go public about or say things about their game because um like say oh sorry it's it's gonna be delayed or something or sorry we have to do this or whatever about the game because they know they get a lot of negative feedback from fans on on whatever they say it doesn't matter um so they're they're very cautious about what they say about the game and I think I I think that someone who it's it's if you're a video game developer I'm in my mind this is a passion project for you and you're doing what you want to do so um so you I I honestly and I I think they're all gamers too so I honestly don't think that they're that they I I think that they're not the culprit here but I could be wrong because I don't know how games are made and who makes which decision. So Fair that's enough. that's my idea of it. But I I agree with I I agree with you that I assure you the developers of the game because they design all the characters and they design um, all the things that they do and all the aesthetics of the game. I I assure you they 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 might they are looking at the psychology of of loot boxes and and instant gratification and things like that. I I agree with you. I I think that they're definitely looking at that. Because I think that the people who are, like, the people who are leading this in the industry are also some people that have some of the best... uh, I would would have to think that they have some of the best relations with the people who are playing their games. So Overwatch loot boxes, Blizzard... Yeah. They're the developer, they're the publisher, it's their title... So it's it's easy for them to be an innovator because it's the developer and the publisher working together to integrate that seamlessly. When you have like Dice and EA, then it's a little bit different because it's it's the structure there is different. But when you have, for instance, GTA and Rockstar, right? So mm-hmm. Rockstar can say that oh, GTA is going to be delayed in terms of when it gets released for X number of reasons or this why DLC is going to be delayed and the gaming community doesn't react the same way as when there's uh, there the system between developer and publisher I feel right. like is is a little different just because the product gets put together in a, such a seamless way that it's it, it, there doesn't seem to be this conflict between the publisher and the developer as seen by um by gamers so like for instance I don't think that you hold, are the only person who holds the opinion that game developers are the good guys, game publishers are the bad guys who are only seeking revenue, right? Right. So when you have a publishing house that is one in the same, right, 
then it, it becomes easier because, oh, they're working with the game developers to make sure that it's the best product, they're in-house, they're one and the same. So that feels like a different system than when it's game developer, game publisher, game publishers trying to not the game developers to make to shoehorn these kinds of things into their games yeah so i think that's why blizzard gets away with it a lot easier rockstar gets away with it and even uh valve so valve with csgo they have their own loot box system there uh with skins and that has never really been a big controversy other than when people were uh setting up sites where they could pay into a system where they would have x oh, amount yeah. of ability to earn <laughs> these that was priority crazy. skins <laughs> and those things are that's literally gambling and those people are being punished for setting up those sites and also I ad- don't, advertising are they? the children yeah, are they're, they they're being taken to court i believe i thought they i thought that tra- that charge got dropped maybe personally, i am uh, i thought it times. got dropped recently i think but which is crazy to me but um but yeah so i i wanted to talk about um we're at half an hour right now but i I wanted to talk about what do you think about um these loot boxes being used to subsidize the price of the game the cost of making the game do you think it's necessary do you think they're doing this um i mean partially because they they spent a hundred million dollars making whatever x game and they need to Make a, the sixty dollar price point is just not cutting it anymore. Um, I think, think it's so. Yeah, I do. That's a good point. So gaming is one of the only hobbies that has become cheaper as time has gone on. Yes, because Chrono Trigger cost a hundred dollars back in nineteen ninety something. So plenty of N sixty and N sixty four games. Uh, most cartridge games cost like almost a hundred dollars back then, and that was a lot more money back then than it right. was now. So, so we've gone and and the price, even though the price is stable and it continues to be the same. The problem being is that currency is inflating while the price is staying the same. So you're actually paying less value for the same uh, amount, right? Yes, right. So yeah, part of that that whole thing is is the fact that a sixty dollar game probably isn't the the price at the correct level that games should be to to match that cost benefit. But at right. the same time, the price point of a sixty dollar game has made gaming so much more abundant that you're selling hundreds of thousands, of millions more copies than you would have in in the old system, right? Mm-hmm. So we're not just talking about a price graph where um, the price needs to keep going because maybe gaming and I think game Yeah, it's not publishers... like price of game going up and then cost of game staying still, right? It's not just that simple. But maybe. also demand has gone up. So we're, we're reaching yeah. an equilibrium point in the, the uh, supply, supply demand graph of... Uh, graph of video game price point where $60 might be a very decent price point uh, for the initial cost buy-in. Maybe it needs to be a little bit more in order to have less of these systems be necessary. Yeah. But I don't think that making... So I don't think with the introduction, I think it's kind of like Pandora's box has already been open. So even if we made a game $100, let's say, with the season pass of Battlefront, and it was $100. Yeah, 110 <laughs> Then you would still need to pay into money to buy the loot, loot boxes. Right. Right? So it's but, even that, that amount of money is not giving you, like, unlimited free loot boxes for the rest of your life. So it, I don't think that the cost-benefit analysis that they're running is such that $60 is too low uh, for them to well, make up all you don't of it think... on the other side. You don't think that if they charged one hundred and ten dollars for Battlefield or for Battlefront, right? That's right. So that's how much that game costs with the season pass. If they just included all that content in for one hundred and ten bucks and just got rid of the loot boxes, you don't think that if everyone bought in a hundred at one hundred and ten dollars that they'd be making the same amount of money? Or, well, they probably well they probably make more money off of loot boxes no matter what. You're right. Yeah, 
I think that there's a solid combination that that steps in there. Like if they made it eighty dollars and then made the loop loot box prices slightly lower, you could probably see if that would swing the graph. But then we're also talking about video games. Even though the price is maintained, video games is still in the culture not superseded something that's viewed as a kind of throwaway money hobby. So the more the more costly the initial investment in any given game is, I think the more difficult it will be to sell it on a massive scale. That's true. That is very true. So they they've kept this price because it's not it's expensive, sure, but it's not it's not outrageously expensive for one game. Right. Right. I mean, I spend stupid amounts of money on video games yearly, so I and I could save that for maybe like a future son or something, <laughs> or like maybe <laughs> something more valuable. Like maybe I want to buy a house if I just <laughs> maybe if I bought a house instead of a video game. <laughs> Or all the video games I bought in my lifetime, that would be a better investment. But um, but then we're I love talking about games. content, <laughs> so content, no. uh, time versus rewards. So yeah, something physical like a house is very different than if I'm going to save all of that money and spend it on a trip or something. You know? Yeah, it's, or it's a I different could, thing. I could be on the other side of the world, right? Yeah. So, but the other thing is that like a sixty dollar investment in a video game gives you how many hours of content, right? And especially us who love RPGs or multiplayer online it video does games. Does depend on the game, but yeah. Yeah, but you the cost benefit analysis for that kind of game is like way out there. I think what really is the effect of of creating a system of loot boxes is not the initial cost of development, it's the cost of running servers. So yes. over the time of the game is gain the game is gaining more popularity, you have sales on the game to increase the back end of sales to make up for development costs. But mm -hmm. on top of that, now you have servers and there are more and more and more and more people playing uh, X amount of game as it can, gains more and more popularity, which is a great thing. But on the back end, you also have a lot of servers that need things. So it's a way of keeping uh, the long tail end of a game uh, really uh, paid, paying for itself as much as possible and making revenue on top of that. So you create a loot box system. So no matter how much DLC, free DLC you pump out into Overwatch, you always have a way to make revenue on that because people are either going to buy the game at $60 when it's not on sale or they're going to buy, uh, well, maybe not $60 with Overwatch. I don't really know how much it costs, but um, at this point. Um, it's thir it's thirty dollars, I think. Right, and then, and then you can make up for it because everybody sees. Oh, everybody has super sweet skins already. I need to invest into the skins. Yes. So let's say <laughs> I bought the game at thirty dollars. In my mind, I can really say, well, I've got thirty dollars to play with if I had bought this game at a new price, right? Right. So there's a $30 window, which I can spend on loot boxes to try and get catch up in terms of skins. Okay. I think that, that that's a logic that would make sense to me. That's reasonable, I'd say. Um, and speaking of that, you know, I, I really... That does make sense in terms of how much money you're spending in total. Um, and I think that's that's a perfect example of uh, where of um, of them subsidizing the cost with the loot boxes. So I think um, I think they're definitely doing that to a certain extent, but I think they're also doing they're putting loot boxes in there to make money, right? I mean, it makes sense. Right. Um, but it it just it seems to be a sleazy way of doing it rather as opposed to a way that benefits the consumer right you know especially what I mean? because it has that that symbol of chance and when people spend twenty five dollars and they get get nothing from it <laughs> no legendary skins or whatever they quote excuse me the equivalent of that would be in the game that they're playing then it yeah it, then it seems like a huge ripoff and especially with the increase in how like a game like overwatch which i know really well so that's why i keep going into that well um they had to redo several times the balance of how they were giving out skins because 
Initially, it was too many legendary skins were popping out. And then they were putting out too much garbage, which nobody cared <laughs> for. So then they had to kind of try and recalibrate. And there's always the things of duplicates are not the cost of what it should be. So it's just a really big balancing scale in the terms of that game. And then you go into a game where it's a pay-to-win game, and then the balancing scale is thrown out the window. I mean, I don't understand how you can create a loot box system which gives players different advantages and can figure out how that would be balanced. I just think you just throw percentages at the wall and don't give a shit. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, it's it's kind of ridiculous what they're what some games are hiding behind these loot boxes. Like, for instance, I don't know if you've been following Shadow of War, right? A, a game that you might be interested in, right? Because Lord of the Rings. I also played uh, the first one. I didn't finish it, but I enjoyed it. Right. It's it's supposed to be a very good game, Shadow of War, and also the uh, Shadow of Mordor, right? That was the mm-hmm. name of the first one. Those were supposed to be really great games, and the Nemesis system was super awesome. Very cool. But... Um, but there's now loot boxes in a single player game, which is crazy to me, right? This isn't even for multiplayer skins. So they can hide whatever they want behind these loot boxes because it's a single player game and it doesn't affect anyone else's enjoyment of the game other than you. Uh, so what they're hiding behind that uh, these loot boxes or so I've heard is uh, very vital to some parts of the game. Um, like, you can get special orcs in the game that help you out in some way in terms of gameplay. So they're hiding gameplay um, things, game uh, gameplay, literal, literal things that you need to do in the game are hidden, not hidden, you can still get them, but they're, you can get them faster if you pay money. Um, and then isn't also... that the same way that, like... Um... If I play NBA 2K, where I can pay for... Oh, that's another example. See, everyone's put it... Did you know the newest NBA game has loot boxes in it? I would imagine that it was. It should have them, because the system of buying coins and then spending coins is way too simple. You need to create a barrier to the adequacy of, uh, of a player. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, they have... Uh, and so does the new Forza 7 game. They have loot boxes as well, uh, or they're going to when it comes out. And then what was I was trying to say, um, the example, like you, so there are things that you can hide in loot boxes, right? You can make them purely aesthetic, which I prefer, but also um, I don't necessarily buy the, the, uh, the, sorry, hiding aesthetic things doesn't really change the game it's only aesthetic right so it's no big deal i i think that your skin in the game really does affect how you feel playing the game you know i think that that it sure it shouldn't give you an advantage over someone so i i'm glad that that's there but it definitely affects your enjoyment of the game so should you be able to hide them behind dlc packs of clothing i i uh i think um you mean like the the so like armor? if I'm playing Batman, <laughs> right? Yeah. So in the in the Batman games, there were DLC packs that you could buy with the X, Y, or Z version of Batman that you could play through yeah. as that Batman. So is that a better system of playing through skins than a loot box system? Well, if we go by the logic of older games then no, it's not all right. Because um, a lot of older games included different skins and colors and things that you can modify your character with um, just in the game. They were just automatically in the game. For instance, I think like the original Spider-Man game for PlayStation. I I played the crap out of that game when I was a kid. But you could dress up as almost any Spider-Man from the comics and all that stuff and or there were quite a few spider-man costumes you could dress up in and they gave you special shit uh, like special abilities and i thought that was really cool or i did when i was a kid anyways and that was just in the game and the base value of the game so now all the skins are hidden behind dlc packs or loot boxes um and while in overwatch i think it gives you something to strive for like you're not really getting any 
progression out of it other than true skill you know you're getting better at the game right mm -hmm. um which is enough for me i would like to get better at that game but um and i try to every day but uh but you know so i i do like the idea that it can be behind um loot boxes i just don't i mean i don't like the idea of paying for loot boxes in general personally <laughs> that's what i'm trying to get to but what um, I'm saying is, what's the difference between having to pay for a DLC to get those skins versus having to pay for a loot box to have because a Because the element skins? of chance. So the it's element the element of chance. chance. Yes. Even if it costs a lot more, let's say um, a, a costume pack would be 10 bucks, but you could only pay 5 bucks and have the chance to unlock every single costume that costs that 10 bucks. Well, let's put it this way. So there's the element of chance, and then there's duplicates. Hmm. Duplicates should not. I don't think should be included. If there's, if there's, if you're going to, if you're going to include duplicates, then give me the option to buy the skin, as opposed to, if you're just only loot boxes. Okay. Only loot boxes. I think it's, it's. I I've spent stupid amount of time trying to get stupid skins in Overwatch, um, be but I can't because I just get duplicates. Right. So and I don't have that amount of time to do that you know i have a lot of time sure to play overwatch or i certainly make it and make enough time to do it but uh i don't like that i have gotten so many duplicates um solid point so that's that's what i wanted that was my opinion on that and then um it's it's a mess i think it's a mess and i think game developers are i i don't think they're seeing any negative they're seeing negative feedback in the comments or whatever but they also get and and i mean i guess i should say publishers also um but they also see that they're still making money so uh what do you what do you think is the remedy for this or do you think it's just going to continue to happen i also want to say sorry that we need to speak up because and the reason why everyone has been speaking up is because sure this doesn't seem so bad now but you know it's only step one i think so right i think this can get way worse and i think it need, needs to happen now uh we need to stop it now if we're going to stop it at all that's my opinion of this i think capitalism is an ever-growing wonder in terms of delving of into possibilities of extracting money <laughs> money yeah so extracting money. capital i think that this pandora's box is opened and kind of will never shut down game yeah. developers and publishers have been working hand in hand to, well publishers have been pushing developers to develop ways to increase the amount of revenue made by video games uh because um the system is kind of priced incorrectly i guess so First, it was episodic content and different things like that instead of DLC. Now we're moving into uh, DLC season passes and things like that. And then, then we moved into just uh, this loot box system as the way of progressing things. So what's going to really be weird is you have DLC that you have to purchase and you have to purchase loot boxes in a game in order to uh, get the rewards for that DLC. So, for instance, a DLC pack includes new weapons, and you can't just get them. You have to buy loot boxes to have a chance at getting those weapons. Things right. like that. I don't think that we're going to solve this um, as, a, as a gaming community, because people... As consumers? Yeah. yeah. I, I think as consumers, people are just too willing to, to forgo all that anyways. and buy it. Like, why did Japan Japan's main console market slow down so hard? It's because the mobile game market exploded. It was a bonanza, and people were trying to make as many games as they could to grab as much money as possible. The small transaction, the microtransaction system is the same way. And this is this is what I'm saying, man. The fucking mobile market ruined everything. Right. The, I think they ruined everything. The, it it all traces back to the mobile market and the first few people who ah. really built in microtransactions to pay to win simple mobile games were 
geniuses. Give them they were they entrepreneurs. Really need the Nobel Prize in, in economics because <laughs> they have they've created a multi billion dollar industry just based on I two don't or three think they need it. Time. I think they have enough money now. <laughs> I don't think they care. <laughs> but yeah, no, exactly. They 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 figured out a way to prey on people who and I think the exam the term in the industry is the the white whale. Um, so they sure you can get uh, a lot of people who get the free game are not going to spend any money on it, which is fine. Um, but then there's there's people who get really addicted to the game or just really like it in general. Maybe not addicted the right word, but um, they and then they spend a thousand dollars on the game. So that those few white whales in the in the pool of however many players they have in the in the gamer player pool (laughs) um those are the people who are giving them the most money and those are the people that they're preying on with more and more loot boxes and more and more aesthetic things that they can buy but on the the byproduct the unintended consequence is preying on children right so yeah you're you have kids for kids i mean we grew up in an age where you bought a game and goddamn everything was in that game right hell yeah there wasn't the need to purchase (laughs) things then we had expansion packs okay cool give me more content because i enjoyed the world i was in perfect yeah or then a sequel right so we grew up in that age but kids in this age they're growing up with microtransactions loot boxes deals uh dlc emails things like that email passwords uh, you always have to enter your email and your password it's that's annoying. right so because <laughs> they need to take that information to be able to sell it off to a uh, a random advertiser advertiser as well sons of bitches so so i think kids are getting preyed upon in this day and age because it's like this microtransaction thing is the norm right it's what's supposed to happen in a game and B, it's just kids are growing up with this idea of the feeding on kids in a way where they can play um, the one-armed bandit and get a skin and feel really good about it. And then they're getting addicted to that feeling of that chance and winning. I think that that is really feeding into a system that is kind of corrupting in the way that we're developing our kids' minds. And so as, as, as the same way that it links into the cell phone is younger and younger people are getting cell phones they're more and more intrigued with the idea of getting likes and things like that on the other end that same feeling of the roulette wheel right or the the what is chat this? roulette what is wheel. this thing what am i trying to say uh, yeah. the slot machine right the slot, slot machine, machine. The slot machine also effect roulette wheel. of the slot machine effects it's the same of, game of, essentially yeah the slot machine effects <laughs> <laughs> of loot loot boxes is really triggering this dopamine hits and people are really getting sucked into that even from a very young age like you play overwatch you don't mean to but you're playing with like six to eight year olds and then you're also oh i know with, with people I our know. age but there's so many kids playing this game and you're just i'm in back of my mind i'm i'm not even thinking of them when i open the loot boxes but when i step back and I'm thinking about this system as a whole, thinking about how a kid is going to interact with a gambling system like that, it's got to really mess with people's minds and, and how they expect rewards to happen. I agree. And so what you're saying, Yvonne, is that um, video games were always bad for you. No. Is that... <laughs> they just have uh, the potential of being very bad. Yes, Yes, very true. Uh, so, Avon, I think we've we've uh, that's a good place to stop. I think I think that's a very solid place um, to end the podcast because I think we've wasted enough of your time. You've heard plenty of things about this. Everyone's talking about it. We just thought we'd give you our two cents. Um, I think we mostly agree with what most of the video game journalists and and influencers or whatever you want to call them uh are saying i think we all agree as consumers we're real games journalism julian yes this is hungover journalism here um but i think um i think that 
loot boxes are here to stay, whether we like them or not. I don't like them at all, but um, in fact, the first game that I can remember playing with loot boxes, I think might have been Overwatch, that I that I cared about, um, that I actively have opened probably 300 of or something um, in total. But, like, I, I, I know they've been in games prior, and I know I always hated them. I always thought that they were... Like, I never liked them to begin with, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Um, but I think that's because they gave me cards out of them, and I hate I hate cards, digital cards. It just <laughs> yes, makes no fucking sense to me. No sense. <laughs> but anyways, Ivan, um, I think that's it. That's all I got. So uh, let me tell you, we end our podcast every single week in a song in a segment called Hung Over Radio. Uh, This is a segment where you, the viewer or listener, can send in your music. Yes, a song that you wrote or co-produced or played an instrument on or sang part of. Um, Or maybe your friend's music, if you'd like. And you can send it in to gaminghungover at gmail.com, and we will play it at the end of the podcast in the audio version, and we will link it in the video version to all the people to watch and listen to. So please provide an MP3 link or something like that. Um, We can get in contact about that. But of course, if no one sends something in, then I get to pick the song, unless Yvonne can think of a song right now. I already have a song, but it's up to you, Yvonne. Nope. What are we going to play? We're going to play Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty soundtrack main theme. This game, oh, this was a doozy of game. And it also came out in a time where games came complete and didn't have season passes, online features, loot boxes, but also still somehow managed to have all the skins you could want. You could dress up uh, the main character, who I won't spoil, uh, in Metal Gear Solid 2, it's not Solid Snake. Spoiler alert! Also, game developers <laughs> cheated and lied back then, too, because all of the no, advertising beforehand was Solid Snake, and then you played as Raiden. Yeah, god damn it! God damn it, Hideo Kojima, you screwed everything over. Um, but yeah, so there are a bunch of different cool things you could do, and a lot of replay value that you didn't have to pay extra for. Was What a time to live in back then. <sighs> but we're in 2017, so I hope you guys enjoy this song, and maybe reminisce about a time in gaming where all you cared about was getting through the story. So here's Metal Gear Solid 2 soundtrack main theme. And until next week, guys, I'm Julian. And I'm Yvonne. Peace out. Peace out.